soilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The film begins with Mickey Pearson entering a pub. He is on the phone with his wife as he sits down for a pint. While another man walks behind Mickey, he overhears someone on the other line antagonizing her. Then a gunshot is fired, and blood pours on the pint. Then we see Raymond, Mickey's right hand. When he enters his house, the man named Fletcher is standing there in the shadows. Fletcher, a smug tabloid journalist who is there on behalf of his boss, Big Dave, editor of the Daily Print. Dave wants to write a piece about Mickey after a recent encounter, when Mickey refused his handshake, because Dave had printed a story about Mickey's buddy who had a gay affair with his butler. Dave offers Fletcher £150,000 for dirt on Mickey, but Fletcher demands that Raymond pay him £20 million for the information. The film moves with Fletcher, telling a story about Mickey Pearson, the criminal most well-known cannabis baron. Pearson received a Rhodes Scholarship to Oxford University when he was younger. But he did not continue his study and dropped out of college. Pearson, who was born into poverty, desires to attain success, collect fortune, and become a man of authority. As a result, Pearson made the decision to sell marijuana to rich college students and criminals. Pearson did not hesitate to use violence against anyone who attempted to mess with him or his business. Pearson aims to sell his marijuana enterprise to the highest bidder after years of creating a wealthy marijuana empire and becoming the most powerful and important person in the criminal underground. So he may retire in peace with his wife, Rosalind. When he heard of an American Jewish millionaire called Matthew Berger, expressing his interest in purchasing Pearson's marijuana firm for 400 million pounds sterling, to demonstrate how majestic and successful his marijuana company is, Pearson brings him to one of his laboratories, where he grows marijuana in the basement of an aristocratic landlord, who needs money to maintain their magnificent property. Matthew was blown away with Pearson's cannabis lab. It was cultivated and managed so efficiently, that it generated high-quality marijuana at a market price that soared. Matthew also questions about Pearson's decision to sell his very successful business. Pearson says that the cops will eventually find out about his marijuana operation. Pearson reasons that with a history of criminal records, his business would be ruined in an instant, if he was found by the authorities. So he chooses to sell it and retire peacefully. Matthew, who appeared to accept Pearson's explanation, then requests Pearson to show him the location where marijuana was processed until it was ready to be marketed and distributed. Pearson has a lovely wife named Rosalind, who runs a successful vehicle repair business and is well known in other nations. Rosalind then advised her husband to remain attentive and cautious, and to not move quickly if he retires later. Because his economic empire will undoubtedly be susceptible and disputed by many people. Pearson who loves his wife so much, he listens to his wife's words. Meanwhile, we see a guy named Dry Eye, who seems to be verifying container paperwork with his crew at another location. Dry Eye is the right-hand man of Lord George, one of China's most recognized crime lord leaders, and is in charge of smuggling items for Lord George. Dry Eye smuggles inanimate things and also conducts human trafficking. Pearson's plan to sell his marijuana company was revealed to Dry Eye by one of his men. Despite Pearson's plans to double the selling price, Dry Eye seems interested and intends to buy it. After hearing this, Dry Eye arrives at Rosalind's workshop shortly after Pearson's departure, then Rosalind recognizes that some of the car components she purchased for her business are illegal. Dry Eye then asks Rosalind to meet him with Pearson, but Rosalind couldn't guarantee it. He manages to get a meeting with Mickey to buy out his business, but Mickey refuses. Dry Eye answers with an insult, prompting Mickey to shoot him in the balls before murdering his henchman and then himself. However, this was all in Pearson's head. In reality, Mickey just flat out refused and made it clear to Dry Eye that he is not the least bit intimidated. That night, a bunch of masked youngsters burst into Pearson's weed lab, defeating the guards and stealing a van load of marijuana before uploading a rap video of their exploits on YouTube. One of the guards quickly reported the occurrence to Pearson, telling him that the youngsters were well trained in martial arts, indicating that they were not regular kids. And that someone had ordered them to do so. The gang of kids that assaulted Pearson's lab turned out to be a group of amateur MMA fighters and YouTubers known as the Toddlers, who were disciples of the coach, a former professional fighter who always taught to fight using the head rather than only the physical. Coach ordered his students to delete the video they had published to YouTube, after learning that they had misbehaved by breaking into and taking marijuana from Pearson's lab. He was appalled to hear that the marijuana belonged to Mickey Pearson. Pearson begins removing cannabis plants from the farm as a precaution following the raid on his lab, while Raymond examines how the gang of young men discovered the site of their marijuana lab. Pearson then approaches Lord Snowball, and requests his assistance in secretly moving the cannabis plant to a safer location. Lord Snowball consented, but he requests Pearson do something for him. 
As it turned out, Lord Snowball had requested Pearson to assist Lord Pressfield in finding Laura, his daughter who is a heroin addict and had lately gone. Pearson then directs Raymond to track down Laura. Raymond and a few other guys track her down to the house of a gang of junkies in order to reclaim her. The addicts battle Raymond's goons, which leads to death of a young Russian man named Aslan, being pushed off a balcony. A separate group of punks record Aslan's death. Ray and his men pursue them where it could be used as evidence that would potentially cause trouble for Pearson. As a result, Raymond and his men pursue the young men in order to steal their smartphones. Raymond first offers to buy their cell phone for a somewhat high price. However, when they resisted and enlisted a local gang, Raymond was compelled to resort to violence in order to obtain the smartphone. After returning Laura to her parents, Raymond informs Pearson about an unintentional incident that killed Aslan, who turned out to be the son of a Russian billionaire and ex-KGB. Laura, on the other hand, returns to her parents but later she dies outside on the lawn due to an overdose. Coach learns that the farm his boys knocked off was Mickey's farm, which pisses him off for their recklessness. He goes to visit Raymond to apologize for his students' actions and offers to fight for the toddlers. Raymond urges Coach to find out who informed Pearson's kids about the lab's location and arrest him. Ocha agrees and quickly finds Fook, one of Dry Eye's henchmen. In an unsuccessful escape attempt, Fook is killed by a train as Raymond is ready to question him. Raymond quickly tells Pearson, who expected Lord George would cut his business's pricing. Pearson then threatens Lord George for pursuing his lab and destroys one of his heroin laboratories. Lord George punishes Dry Eye for insulting Pearson by offering to acquire his firm, which is degrading because Pearson and Lord George have comparable enterprises. Lord George sent one of his henchmen to kill Dry Eye, but he killed Lord George instead. Dry Eye took over after Lord George's death. Dry Eye, the gang's leader after Lord George's murder, still wants Pearson's business empire. When Pearson is conversing with his wife while sitting alone in a pub, we see the beginning of the movie. We see a stranger behind him is going to murder him. But Raymond arrived just in time and immediately shot the guy to save Pearson. Pearson raced to his wife's residence out of concern for her after learning he had been the intended murder victim. Dry Eye has arrived at Rosalind's place with the intent to kidnap her. However, she manages to kill Dry Eye's men before her two-shot Derringer runs dry. Dry Eye immediately paralyzes Rosalind and smothered her hand. Before finally, Pearson came and fatally shot Dry Eye, when the man was about to rape his wife, killing him. Then, Fletcher explains to Raymond that he has been following Pearson and has gathered vital information which might damage Pearson and his weed economic empire on Big Dave's orders. Fletcher also informs Raymond that Dry Eye has teamed up with Matthew who seeks to destabilize Pearson's business empire in order to cut its price. Which Matthew seems excessive. Fletcher went to Raymond in the hope of receiving a higher payment for the information than Big Dave had promised. Raymond then instructs the toddlers to capture Big Dave after acquiring all of this information. They then sedated the man, videotaped him copulating with an animal, and threatened to broadcast the footage online if Big Dave did not cease his inquiry and remain silent about Pearson and his men. After that, Pearson and Matthew reconnected at a frozen fish business, a front for Pearson's cannabis plant distribution activities throughout Europe. Pearson exposes his knowledge of Matthew's plans, revealing Dry Eye's frozen body, and affirms to Matthew that he is defending his business empire. Matthew orders Pearson to reduce the sale price of his corporation to £130 million sterling because of the previous dispute. Pearson then threw Matthew into the refrigerator, where he would freeze to death until he paid $270 million in recompense for the blood on his hands and the cost of restoring order. Pearson confesses he is not passionate about the money, but because Rosalind was almost raped, he expects a pound of flesh from Matthew's body, wherever Matthew chooses, as retribution for this indiscretion. Fletcher contacts Raymond again for his information reward, but Raymond reveals that he had been following Fletcher the entire time after placing a tracker on him at their last encounter. Raymond then tells the toddlers to take the evidence cache from Fletcher's information so that any material in Fletcher's hands that may lead to Pearson is no longer a danger. Later, though Fletcher discloses that he had also sold information of Pearson to Aslan's father, a former KGB agent. Fletcher says that the assassin Raymond killed while he was ready to assassinate Pearson, was under the direction of Aslan's father. Outside Raymond's home, Coach finds two Russian assassins come to assassinate Raymond, and he instantly kills them, allowing Fletcher to escape. Pearson is taken by two further Russian assassins, but they are assaulted by the toddlers, who want to complete their mission and solve their coach dilemma. They fired onto the assassin's vehicle, killing the Russian assassins and enabled Pearson to flee. A few days later, Fletcher decided to adapt Pearson's narrative into a film for Miramax. 
Fletcher gets a cab after his meeting with the film's producers, only to discover that Raymond is the driver. Pearson and Rosalind return to their cannabis empires and rejoice at their own businesses upon learning of Fletcher's imprisonment. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.